guys. Welcome back to another essential tutorial. So today we're going to be using 3ds Max and Tide Flow in order to create this scene. And we're going to be using NVIDIA's Omniverse in order to render it in real time. So I'm just going to take you a bit over the modeling process. I just have a simple plane here that I converted into a lattice using the lattice modifier. And I'm just going to duplicate that 20 times and then I'm just going to add it to its own layer here just so we can keep things organized. It just helps adding things under their own layers. That way later on when we're using Tideflow, it's easy to kind of grab and select things. So here I'm going to add four boxes and those are going to make up the floor. And then I'm going to rename them just for again organization. And then let's duplicate that again another 20 times. I'm going to have three main separate layers. We're going to have our floor, we're going to have our lattice, and we're going to have our glass. I'm keeping things pretty simple. You can use way more complicated models if you really want to, but I kind of want to just show you some of the principles that I used in order to achieve this effect. And so here I'm going to create a glass piece again, just using a box. And I'm just going to copy this across. I'm just kind of keeping things fairly loose um, as far as how it's modeled. And so what I'm also going to do here is I'm going to adjust the pivots so that they are lined along the bottom of the pane of glass. That way it rotates in from the bottom rather than from the center. So going into the top view, I'm just going to duplicate the one side here and then I'm going to duplicate it once more. That way it covers all the way around the building. And again, we're going to just rename it and add it to its own layer as well. I'm also going to assign a material for each layer. So we're going to have one material for the glass, one for the floor, and then one for the lattice. Okay, cool. So now moving on, we're going to now work with Tideflow. So I included a free project file here that you guys can import and merge into your own file. And all it includes is a sphere, a torus, and a Tideflow setup. It's pretty basic in how it's animated. The sphere controls the start point and the torus, any particles that are inside the volume are going to then be triggered by the ripple events. So jumping to the Perth objects node here, let's add all of our glass panes um, just by right clicking and selecting all those layers. And I'm just going to enable these other events here so you can see how it takes effect. And you can see here on the surface test, that is where we input the sphere start point. And you're going to see here on the custom properties, I'm going to be storing the rotation, position and the scale. That way it's going to store the neutral position. We're then going to offset the rotation 90 degrees. And then this third event here, you're going to see that it's going to slowly interpolate back to that original neutral position. That's why we're storing the custom properties. So you can see here um, in the time test that after three frames, it's going to then try and find its way back to that home point. So you can see if I offset uh, 90 degrees on the Z axis, it just gives it a different look because it, that's the initial offset point that we're setting. We're also taking the scale and setting it to zero so that it slowly interpolates that scale back up to 100. So now I'm going to show you here how the ripple layer works. Any particles that are inside that volume are then going to only be shown in this next event. And I'm going to use a surface force and adjust the attraction parameters so that way we can control just how much those particles are offset from that position once they enter that ripple event. So you can see I'm using the surface test operator and within that we're going to use the volume inside test so that any particles that are inside the torus are past the next event. And I'm just going to display this box here just that way we can get a better look at the setup. And I'm just going to play around with this force parameter so you can see if I you know, crank it up to 50, the particles are going to blast out of their initial position and then try and find their way back to the original stored position. This is way too extreme, um, but you can just see how quickly you can add some variety to your animations. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to duplicate this tie flow setup. And the only thing we really need to change is the objects that are inputted. The initial start point and the ripple are going to stay the same. So let's just grab the birth objects node here and let's remove and add in the floor pieces and you can see just like that that they're now included into the animation and then i'm going to duplicate this one more time and we're going to do the exact same thing we're going to clear out the birth objects node remove all and let's add in the lattice objects so we now have three identical tie flow setups the only thing i'm going to change though on the lattice version is I want to have the object elements themselves come in as separate objects. 
You can see by default right now they're coming in as one uniform object. But in order to add more detail, you just have to change the object elements parameter, enable it, and then I'm going to enable the center all pivots as well. So it's going to center to each individual object element. And it kind of breaks up the model now and you can see that it animates on those individual object elements. So I'm just going to show you here a quick example. This is how the lattice modifier breaks it up. So just keep it in mind when you're adding your own 3D models into TieFlow. If you want to have that feature enabled, you'll just need to have your own object elements within them. Next here, I'm just going to add the materials that we created before onto each individual TieFlow setup. The other thing I want to show you guys is that you can use retiming on the tie flow setups in order to animate them on either faster or slower. So I'm just going to offset the animations by playing with the speed percentage time so that in this case the lattice and then the floor and then the glass comes on last. It's just a great way to add a bit of variety and it still keeps us in that non-destructive workflow. Okay great, so now that that's done let's go ahead and export those particles so that we can get them working within Omniverse. Using the export particles operator, let's change the export type to objects. We're going to change the frame range to 200. And let's just change the name to glass so that those objects have individual names. And that's it. So let's export the particles as objects. It's going to go ahead here and add them to our scene. And let's just repeat that for each individual flow. I'm going to rename the pieces here for floor and then we're going to have one for lattice as well. And then once that's done, I'm going to just add them to selection sets. So it's easy to grab them and we can get them ready for export. It's not something that you need to do, but it's always a good idea to keep your projects organized. And it just helps you reselect those objects if you ever need to re-export. So let's go to File, Export, Export Selected. And we're just going to export it as an FBX. And I just want to make sure that animation is included. And that's it. And I'm just going to go ahead and repeat here for both the lattice and the floor as well. So we'll have in total three FBX files corresponding to each tie flow setup at the end of it. So now jumping into Omniverse, let's right click on those FBX files and let's convert them to USD. That's the format you'll need in order to work directly within Omniverse. So moving on, I'm just going to add those USDs into a new Omniverse project here by simply just choosing the add sublayer and then selecting the USD files. And there you go. So you can see it now displaying in real time. I'm just going to add a sky layer here just so we can get some lighting going. And as I scrub through my timeline, you can see that FBX animation playing in real time. And if I just go down to the root node and I select all the glass, we can start playing around with the materials and get some look dev going. So for the glass, I'm just going to add a quick tinted glass preset here. And I'm going to add some concrete as well to the flooring. And then I'm just going to add some metal material for the lattice. So you want to just make sure that you're selecting stronger than descendants. That way it's going to override the default materials that were brought in. I'm also going to switch it from real time to RTX path traced. That way we can get more of a sense of what the final look is going to look like. So for the next thing I wanted to show you guys is that you can leverage the entire marketplace from Unreal Engine. There are a ton of amazing assets that you can either purchase or download for free, even between the Quixel Bridge library that Unreal Engine makes available. So I have this scene already open up here in Unreal Engine. And in order to export a building, for instance, all I have to do is select the mesh, right click, hit export to Omniverse and give it a file name. Then I'm going to hit OK. And we're going to jump back into Omniverse. I'm going to add a new sub layer and simply select that new USD that we just created. And there you go. So you can see it automatically brought in all the materials. It's really quick and easy to get your full scene built out using this kind of workflow. So I'm going to go ahead and open up one of the scenes I built and showed at the beginning. And you can just see how incredibly fast everything renders. If you're used to kind of the traditional workflow with V-Ray or Redshift uh, or Arnold or anything like that, you'll just see how incredibly fast this is in comparison for being able to do your look dev, set up new camera angles and get your animation going in real time. So I definitely recommend checking it out. There's a ton of great tools that are available in their kit and it's a game changer. Like for my pipeline and my rendering workflow, this will definitely be the tool of choice moving forward. 
So once you find a camera angle that you're happy with, um, you can easily animate the camera by going down to the extensions and going over to the keyframer tab. And all you have to do is select the camera. In this case, I'm just going to create a new one from view. And if it's selected, you can add a keyframe on the start position, move the camera over to where you want it to end, and just add in another keyframe. I'm going to right click here and change the interpolation to linear. And there you go. You can see that we now have some camera movement. So to export your animation, go to the rendering tab and select movie capture. I'm going to leave most of the settings the same. The only thing I'm going to change here is I want to use the RTX path traced preset. I'm going to increase the samples to 12. And then all I have to do is set the output path. In this case, I'm going to use the EXR format. And that's it. I'm going to go and capture the sequence. And that was pretty much it. So once the EXR sequence finished rendering out of Omniverse Create, I simply just brought it into After Effects and added a tiny bit of grain, a bit of vignetting, and a bit of color correction. You can add all of those things actually natively within Omniverse. It's something that I'm still diving into all the features and trying to learn it, but it's really powerful and I definitely recommend checking it out.